Hello, Yoga Collective. This is Mike. I'm at the studio. It is March 31st, and we are, as you know, we're all in a hunker down mode with the virus, and I'm here by myself. Unfortunately, don't get to practice with everybody in our little community, but I thought I would uh, spend a few minutes and put together just a video, a yoga video uh, I'll put on uh, Facebook, maybe email out or whatever, and uh, see if it can reach you. Uh, I'd like to uh, just send my uh, thoughts to each one of you to stay healthy and to continue to practice yoga. I think uh, practicing yoga in these times is very important. Uh, it's important for both our physical health and our mental health. I know we're all stressed out. Uh, two of the biggest things that we normally worry about are our health, uh, that of us and our families, and also our, our financial situation. So uh, you know, I'm bringing this to you uh, for free. I'll put it online, put it on YouTube, and we'll see where that goes. Hopefully when all this virus uh, issue is uh, resolved, uh, maybe in May of this year, hopefully uh, we can resume our practice here at the studio. And, and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. But right now, I'm just gonna practice with the minimal props because I know many of you at home don't have props. So I'll uh, not use many props today. I'm gonna go through a uh, little sequence, a spinal floss sequence that one of my yoga teachers, Margo Sorum, uh, trademarked. Uh, that just move the spine through the ranges of motion of the spine. And we'll do a little, uh, some inversions because I was looking at uh, the BKS Iyengar uh, Life on Yoga book. Uh, there's a section in the back of that book that describes, he describes all kinds of different uh, movements, asanas, uh, that pertain to different health conditions. So I was looking at that for uh, how to build up your immune system. And two things you can do there is one is the Ujjayi breath, which we'll do here in a second. And the other is uh, to do inversions, to go upside down. And, and my definition of an inversion is any time that your heart uh, is above your head. So any time that you lower your head below the elevation of your heart, you're doing an inversion. And I think there's a huge amount of health benefits to inversions. Uh, not to mention that it also darkens up your hair color. So. <laughs> Uh, we can all use that. So far, it hasn't given me any more hair, but uh, at least it hasn't got any more gray. So, uh, with that, let's just start. Uh, we'll start in a comfortable seated position, and it could be a sukhasana, like I'm in, just a cross-legged position. If you can, sit up on some pillows or some cushions of something, whatever you have, just so that your thigh bones are lower than the top of your hip bones. You can feel the top of your hip bones, your, your, uh, your iliac crest right on top. And if you could sit up high enough to where your, your knees are below that, that would be uh, great. That allows you to put a little bit of normal curve in your lumbar and your lower spine right above your uh, tailbone, just as we normally have a little bit of curve there when we're standing up so that we're not trying to sit there all hunched up and hunched over. We can sit there relaxed. This helps to broaden the collarbones, helps to open the heart. It helps to align the spine from the sacrum, sit bones right to the top of the head, aligns the chakras all up through the chakras going from your, your uh, the bottom of your pelvis right up through the top of your head, lines everything. So that's the, allows a good flow of energy then. As you sit here, you can feel what is making contact with the ground. And as we pay attention to this, be mindful of what is contacting the ground, we take an inhale and we deepen our inhale. That brings the energy, the prana energy into our body and brings it right up through the chakras, right up through our spine right up to the top of the head. So you can close your eyes. And on your next inhale, just deepen that inhale. And then on the exhale, just 
let the exhale nice and long exhale at the bottom nice deep inhale again a long exhale is a key to stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system the parasympathetic nervous system is the part of your nervous system that is a calming nervous system the relaxation a part of your nervous system as opposed to the sympathetic nervous system which is one that is the fight or flight that's the one that we uh, get adrenaline we get all, all, all rushed up and we don't need that right now we need as a society we need to uh, improve and stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system and one way to do that is just to as you inhale Followed by a deep exhale, the longer the exhale and slower the exhale, the better. That just calms your nervous system. Stress is also a key uh, proponent of, of uh, sickness. And it is, uh, it is contrary to your immune system. So the more yoga we do, the more sitting, quietly and focus on our breath, uh, such as meditation. You don't have to call it meditation, but uh, that's what we're doing right now. Sitting here calmly, our mind is not wandering. We're focusing on our breath, long inhale, long exhale. That is meditation. It's, it's the, uh, one of the limbs of, one of the eight limbs of yoga. I don't even know what time we started here. Okay, it's almost one o'clock. Started about five to one. So just let the exhale be nice and long. After your next inhale, inhale nice and deep, and then hold it for a count of one or two at the top of that inhale. And then exhale. At the bottom of your exhale, hold that for a count of one or two. And then follow that by a long inhale, long exhale. What we're doing as we regulate our breath, our normal breath we don't regulate. Just the rest of the day you go about your business. It's an involuntary muscle uh, uh, contraction expansion that allows you to breathe. Right now we're regulating that breath and what we're doing we're using the strength of our diaphragm muscle which is a big muscle runs right between your chest cavity and your abdominal cavity and circles all inside your rib cage and as we as we regulate and consciously move that muscle down into our abdomen on the inhale our belly sticks out because the contents of the abdomen have to go somewhere so as the diaphragm moves down your belly comes out, it's okay, you have a nice big old fat in your belly. But what that does, it, it provides a vacuum in your lungs and the air comes into your lungs. Inhale, diaphragm goes down, air comes into your lungs. On the exhale, the diaphragm moves up into your chest cavity and pushes the air out of your lungs. The lungs don't have any muscles to work, so the diaphragm is doing all the work when you regulate your breath. That's why it's important to have a nice strong diaphragm. And as you practice this yoga breath, the yoga breathing uh, techniques, and there's you know, many, many, many yoga breathing techniques. This is just one, and we'll do one more here in a minute. You're strengthening that diaphragm muscle. And the average American only uses 67% of their lung capacity. So, as we practice this yogic breathing, we're going to engage and we're going to be able to tap into more of our lung capacity. Now, I've noticed that when I've climbed mountains, uh, I've been climbing mountains for 30 or 40 years, and just since I've been doing yoga, I recognize that my breath capacity is much more than what it was prior to doing yoga. It's pretty cool. So now we're going to incorporate the Ujjaya breath. The Ujjaya breath, BKSI Inkar, has said this uh, breath is one of the 
breaths. One of the pranayama techniques, pranayama is another of the eight limbs of yoga, is a pranayama technique that stimulates and improves the immune system. The way the Ujjayi breath works is you keep your mouth closed, your lips closed. It's easier to do on the exhale than the inhale, but you can do it on both inhale and exhale. But we're, we'll start with just the exhale. As you exhale, for me, my tongue comes to the roof of my mouth and I constrict my throat a little bit. And it's almost like you're saying, hum, hum, but you don't use your vocal cords. So you're not making a vocal sound like when you do when you're talking or like when you're doing your hum, you don't make a vocal sound. What makes the sound, and usually you only hear it in your own body, uh, sometimes you hear it with a yoga uh, student next to you, if they really perfected the Ujjayi breath. On the exhale, mouth closed, your tongue, my tongue doesn't come clear to the roof of my mouth, but it, it comes up a little bit to where I use the back of my tongue to help constrict my throat. And as I do that, I'm making a little, on the exhale, a little bit of a uh, sound. It sounds like a, a conch shell, a seashell, if you see or hear the seashore, uh, or something like that. But it's just a constriction of your breath, constriction of your throat as you breathe, constriction of those passages, just breathe through your nose as you exhale, as you exhale through your nose, you're constricting that that uh, air passage and you're providing more, what that's doing is providing back pressure into your lungs and what that's enabling you to do <coughs> as you're exhaling, the diaphragm is pushing up, but you're constricting that, uh, that, that exhale, you're constricting that outflow of breath by the constriction. So that puts a higher, what they call partial pressure. Now I'm an, I'm an engineer, I know. It puts a higher partial pressure into your lungs, which then allows that oxygen in your lungs to move out into your bloodstream even more so than if you didn't apply this slight constriction. Uh, I've used this in mountain climbing a lot at, at elevation, high altitudes, uh, which uh, stimulates a, actually a lower elevation, a higher pressure in your lungs. So let's practice that. Mouth closed, your eyes can be closed. Inhale, use your tongue, constrict the back of your throat a little bit. Exhale, all the way, hold. Inhale, just let the inhale be natural. You don't have to worry about the Ujjayi breath on the inhale right now. It's, 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 you can do it, the same thing, same constriction on the inhale as you do the exhale, but I think it's more important to do on the exhale because it does provide that additional pressure. You want, on the inhale, I like to have it open so I can get all the air into my lungs as possible, so I'm not pro providing that constriction. But then on the exhale, have that little constriction Make that little noise inside your head. Hold at the bottom. Inhale, hold at the top. Constrict your throat, constrict that passage. Exhale, Ujjayi breath. Let's just practice that a few more times. I'm going to come up close see if you can hear it. I don't know if 
you could hear that or not, but I can hear it inside my head. <laughs> so I know it's working for me. It's, uh, I've been told that uh, 20 minutes of Ujjayi breathing is equivalent to two hours of aerobic exercise. So you can practice this Ujjayi breath all, all the way through your yoga practice. You can practice it off the mat, at home, anywhere, when you're hiking, when you're walking, when you're bike riding. Uh, if you're at home, before bed, you can practice, uh, you know, five minutes of Ujjayi breath is very, very beneficial to your, to your health and to your body. Let's do two more Jaya breaths. And then you can blink your eyes open. And that's our pranayama practice for today. Okay, now we're going to start into a, a bit of a warm up. We're just gonna come on to hands and knees. This is a warm up, this is my traditional warm up. This is a warm up that uh, I like to do, my warm up sequence. So we're gonna practice cat cow. On an inhale, you drop your belly. I hope you can hear me too. I don't know what the volume's like so far. So drop your belly, your gaze comes forward. On the exhale, your back comes toward the sky. My wrists are directly underneath my shoulders. My hips are underneath my or my knees are underneath my hips. I hope my hips are underneath my knees. I'll be upside down. Inhale. On the inhale, pull your hands towards your knees horizontally. On the exhale, push your hands away from your knees horizontally. A little isometric move there. We're just warming up the spine. There's five ranges of motion to the spine, and we're going to, this is a forward and a backward, so here's two of them right here, forward and backward movement. Continue you, your Ujjayi breath, and then come to neutral tabletop, and we're going to wag the tail, look over your left shoulder to your left ankle. Stick that right hip way out to the side and wag over to the other side. Look at your right ankle. Stick that left hip way out to the side. My spine just cracked, so that's a good, that's a good sign for me. So this is a lateral bend to the side. Another range of motion to the spine. Just follow your breath. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Come into neutral. Now walk your hands forward about a foot on your mat. We're going to come into puppy dog. Push your hips back from your hands. Plant your hands on the mat. Push your hips back. Get long through the upper arm, through the armpit, down your side. Push back. Keep your elbows up off the mat. Maybe your head can come down if you like. But what is more important is to get length through that spine. So this is axial extension. We get length through the spine from our tailbone to our hands. Push those hips back. Sometimes I like to roll my shoulders up toward the ceiling and then down toward the mat. You can play around a little bit. Then walk both hands over to the left corner of your mat. Plant your hands. This is a big lateral extension on the right side. Push that right hip back. We're extending. Now, just breathe into your right lung. Think about that breath, the inhale, just coming into your right lung. Just breathe, inhale just to your right lung. See if you can feel, be mindful enough, see if you can feel the intercostal muscles expand and move See if you can feel those ribs move. The intercostal muscles are the muscles between your ribs. 
And if we can expand those muscles, or we, if we can make those muscles limber, let me put it that way, if we can make them limber, it allows our ribs to expand when we're inhaling, it gives us a bigger breath. And come up, walk your hands over to the other corner of your mat, place your hands, push that left hip back. My hands are at the right corner of the mat. I'm pushing my left hip back. I'm stretching through this entire left side body, big lateral bend. Now breathe just into your left lung. Inhale to your left lung. If you can feel your shirt moving against the skin of that left side body. And then walk your hands back up and in. Uh, I'm not going to use a bolster this time since you probably don't have a bolster at home. If you do, if you do have a bolster at home, what I like to do, use a bolster. We're going to do a thread the needle, a twist. Put the bolster right inside of your wrist, right between your knees and your hands. And then we're going to take our right hand underneath and we're going to come down onto our shoulder. Left hand snakes out forward and we just come into a twist. Stack your left shoulder on top of your right shoulder. You can do this without the bolster too. For me and my flexibility, the bolster helps a little bit, but it's not necessary. Breathe into this twist as best you can. It's a little bit more difficult when you're in a twist to get that diaphragm to move down to your abdomen to get a big breath. Now bring that forward hand back in, push yourself up. I'm going to get rid of that bolster as I twist to the other way, come into your neutral tabletop. This time you pick up your left hand, you sneak it underneath your right, come down your left shoulder, snake that right hand forward, and just breathe. Bring that hand in, come back up into neutral tabletop, get your wrist directly underneath your shoulders. I'm going to extend my right leg back and I'm going to plant my toes and I'm going to push back into my toes to stretch the Achilles tendon. I'm pushing the back of my knee toward the ceiling. My thigh is engaged. I'm stretching my calf muscle, which is called, my favorite word, it's called the gastrocnemius. Gastrocnemius, that's calf muscle. Stretch that out. You can pulse a little bit, but don't pulse too hard because we don't want to damage that Achilles tendon. And then when you're ready, you can raise that back leg up into up into the air, just as high as your hip, your hip, not any higher than your hip. You don't want to go any higher. Just and dorsi flex that upper foot, your right foot, back towards your knee. Bring your toes towards your knee. That's called dorsi flexion. Then you can raise your left hand out in front of you if you like to. Sunbird pose. Your gaze is just down to the mat in front of you. Your hand, your thumb is directly toward the ceiling. Your fingers are spread. Your foot is flexed. If you like to, you can come out to the side. Bring your arm out to the side, your leg out to the other side. Airplane pose. Come back in. Bring that airplane back in line with the runway and come down for a nice landing on the runway. Shake that out a little bit. Align your knees with your hips, hands with your shoulders. Spread your fingers on the mat. Left leg back this time. Plant your toes, really engage that thigh, straighten that back leg out, push into that heel, stretch the Achilles tendon, stretch your gastrocnemius, your calf muscle, 
stretch your hamstring. Then when you're ready, you can raise that back leg up to hip height. Right hand then comes out. A little bit of a balance move here too. Thumb toward the ceiling, fingers stretched. Hello. Hello. If you like, you can come in the airplane. Arm out to the side, leg out to the side. Come back, align with runway 105 and bring that airplane right down to a nice smooth landing. Shake that out a little bit. Just a little organic movement, loosen up that spine some more. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna do a a uh, yoga uh, sequence that uh, Margo Sorum uh, has uh, trademarked. It's called Spinal Floss. So come onto your mat, onto your back. Hope you can see this. Yeah, we can see it. I think. Hope you can hear me. Spinal floss. This is Ardha Shavasana. Bring your feet in fairly close to your hips. Just let your breath settle. You can continue to do the Ujjayi breath. Bring your hands down to the mat, palms down, your feet in fairly close to your bone. And then on an inhale, we're going to come up in the bridge pose. We're going to raise our hips up toward the ceiling. Come up on your shoulders. And then on the exhale, you're going to roll down one vertebrae at a time. One vertebrae at a time, roll down. And then keep the hips rolling forward. Roll your hips forward to get a little bit of space underneath your back. On the exhale, roll your hips backward. Or on the inhale, rather. Inhale, come back up. Expand across your collarbones. On the exhale, come down one vertebrae at a time. Follow your own breath, follow the speed of your own breath. Roll those hips forward. Roll the hips backward on the inhale. Come back up. And then we're going to come back down. This time we're going to add our arms into it. So on the inhale, we're going to bring our hips toward the ceiling. As our arms come up toward the ceiling, our arms come all the way to the floor behind you if that's okay with your shoulders. If not, leave your arms down. And on the exhale, your arms come down with you. Roll your hips forward. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, they come down. Hips come forward. This time, we're going to come up with our arms. We're going to come up with our hips. Arms come to the floor behind you. This time, leave your arms. Leave your arms to the floor behind you. The arms are overhead. Exhale. Bring your spine down to the mat. One vertebrae at a time. Roll down. This is big axial extension. Roll those hips forward. We're really working our spine now. Really giving it some movement. And then come back up in the bridge. Come down one more time on your exhale. Arms still on the floor behind you. Oh, it feels good to get that spine, let gravity take a, a break for a minute. Let gravity hunker down while we're doing our yoga. Okay, this time our arms come down as we bring our spine down. Our arms come down. So that was one range of motion of our spine, a back bend coming up into bridges, a back bend, and we had a little axial extension there too. So now we're going to bring our knees in. This is called Apanasana. Bring our knees in, hands on our kneecaps, bring our knees in on the exhale. On the inhale, we extend our knees, extend, push your knees against your hands to extend your arms. So I'm tractioning through my arms. 
Pull my arms in on the exhale. Pull those knees in. This is a forward bend. And then we're going to exhale. We're going to come clear back out again. One more time. Pull in. Apanasana. And go out. Okay, we're going to set our, our uh, feet down this time. And now we're going to do a little uh, uh, axle extension. So we're going to straighten our legs out on the mat. And we're going to put the heels uh, of our feet about the width of our mat. And then we're just going to work our heels. We're going to go in, point our toes toward each other, point your toes away from each other. Toes toward each other, away from each other. Toward each other, away from each other. Your knees can be a little bit bent with this if you like. And just maybe pick up the speed a little bit. Get big range of movement. So it's moving, it's moving my legs. My feet are doing the work. My feet are grounded onto the mat. But it's transferring that movement all the way from my feet right up through the full length of my legs, right up into my spine. And maybe get a little bit faster with that. Good. Now, quiet your legs down. Pull your legs back in to where your heels are in line with your, with your hip pointers. You can put your fingers on top of your hip pointers. And that's where your heels should be aligned. Toes directly toward the ceiling. Arms can be anywhere you like. And then we're just going to point the toes. Pull the toes back towards your knees. Point, pull, point, pull, point, pull. And then you can go faster. You can see my heels are what are grounded. But it's moving my entire body along the mat. My entire body is moving up and down the mat. And it's all generated from my heels being grounded on the mat. Okay, relax, just relax. Take a breath. Take a new jolly breath. <laughs> now we're going to bring our legs right together. Maybe the knees come up off the mat just a little bit. You don't want your legs to hyper, your knees to hyperextend. So if you have knees that normally hyperextend, or maybe you want to put some, a blanket or something underneath your knees. Mine don't hyperextend, so they're just going to lay flat. You're going to take your hands and you're going to form, you're, you're going to spread your fingers and you're going to put one finger, the fingertips of one hand against the fingertips of the other like a ball, like you're holding a ball. This then comes up toward the ceiling and it comes up overhead. Now I'm going to lengthen between my toes and my fingers. I'm going to push my fingers together real hard. I'm pushing my legs together, my right leg against my left leg. I'm getting, I'm thinking everything in the midline of my body, the midline being all the way from my toes to my fingers, everything toward the midline of my body. Push real hard. This is okay. <laughs> My iPhone was full. My storage was full, so now I'm on the iPad. We'll see what happens here. So, uh, let's see, where was I? Okay, now, we're gonna, arms out to the side. Hope you can see me. Legs up, tabletop position. And our legs come over toward one side, and maybe your shoulder comes up off the mat. And then you can roll back. Your legs come back to the same side, shoulder comes up, and you come back again. This time when you come over to the side, you're going to hold it. And your arm is up, my shoulder's up anyway. If, if this is not good for your shoulder, just put your hand right on your hip. Shoulder's up, and then if you like, you can move your arm in an arc, up and down, up to the top, down to the bottom. Your head can follow as well. When it comes up to the top, you're looking forward towards your knees. When it comes down, and you're rotating your arm as you're doing this. When your arm is out straight behind you, your palm is up, 
palm is up high. When it's over your head, your palm faces the floor. I'm coming back down, rotate my arm, palms toward the ceiling. When it comes down, my palms toward the mat. When it's down at the bottom of my mat. And then just hold it in, in a place that you like. Just hold it. Wherever it feels good. And then bring that hand back onto your hips. Let your other hand help your knees back up into center. Place your knees. Bring your knees up again, tabletop, and go the other direction with your knees. Over to the side. Come back up in the center. Come back over to the side. Come back up in the center. This time come all the way over to the side and leave them down. Maybe you can hold them down with your other hand. Your shoulder maybe comes up a little bit. And then if it's good for your shoulder, you work your arm up and over your head, your palm faces the mat, out to the side, the palm faces up, coming down toward the bottom, the palm faces down. I got my head rotated toward the camera so you can hear my voice, but you can move your neck along with this too if you like. This is called angel wing, so you just move your arm in angel wing, up and over your head, and then down. Maybe hold it out. Find a, find a spot that feels good for that stretch of the pectoralis muscle in your chest, the part of your front, the frontal part of your deltoid muscle. Open up that collarbone, the clavicle. And then take your hand. Put your hand right on your hip with your other hand, left hand, help your knees back up in the center, bring your feet back to the mat. This time, wrap your fingers around one knee and pull that knee right into the chest on the exhale. On the inhale, push away so hard that you actually raise your head and your shoulders up off the mat a few inches. And then come back down, pull that knee in on the exhale. Inhale, come back up again. Come down, pull that in, set that knee down. Get your other, wrap your hands, interlace your fingers, the one finger over from what you did last time. Around your knee, pull that knee in, really pull it in right into your chest. We're getting a lot of stretch through our glute by doing this. And then stretch it out so much that you actually pick your head and shoulders up off the, off the mat a couple inches. Come back down. Stretch it out. Come back down. And put your feet down. Okay, one last bit of spinal floss, you're laying on your mat, both feet come over to the left corner of your mat. I don't know if you can see this now, but both feet over to the left, or uh, my feet are to the right corner, I'm not going to mirror you. So both feet to the right corner of your mat, in fact you can cross your left foot, your left ankle over your right ankle if you like. Your right arm then comes down toward and points toward your feet, palm facing the mat. Your right, your left arm comes up and overhead and gets long overhead. So my right arm, I'm leaning, this is called banana pose to the right. So my whole body is curved to the right. My right arm is down toward my feet. My left arm is over my head. I'm really stretching my fingers of my left hand away from my feet, away from my hip. So we're getting lateral bend now, which is, are the last two movements of the spine. So forward, backward movement, left and right twist, that's four. Well, we've got a forward and backward, we've got left and right twist, we've got an axial extension, 
And then we got lateral bends to the right, lateral bends to the left. Those are the movements of the spine. And bring that extended hand back down, come back down in the center, relax for a minute. Now extend both legs out to the left corner of your mat, cross your right ankle over your left ankle. Your left hand comes down on the uh, palm down to the mat, toward your feet, right arm up and over your head. Extend that real as long as you can. Get as much length in that upper underarm, as much length through that side body as we get this big axial extension. Uh, it's, it's a lateral bend rather, a lateral bend through our right side body. It's extending our axis of our spine on the right side, but it's compressing the axis of our spine on the left side. So it's a lateral bend. And bring that back down. And then put your feet about uh, the width of your mat, or just windshield wiper the legs back and forth just a little bit. A couple times. Maybe bring the knees in and then just draw circles on the ceiling with your knees. First one direction, then the other direction. And then come and sit up. Very good. Okay, I think it's working good now. Now we're going to do a little abdominal work. So we're going to do Navasana, boat pose. So bring your arms just right behind you a little bit. Knees bent, feet up flat on the mat. And I'm going to bend my elbows. As I bend my elbows, my feet come up. This is Navasana, supported Navasana. Now you, if you like, you can let go of your hands. Bring your lower legs, your shins up horizontal if you like. Dorsi flex those toes back toward your knee. Straighten your back as much as possible. You're going to have a little bend. That's just the nature of this pose. If you like, you can straighten your legs, straighten your arms, hold that pose for a count of five. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cuatro and a half, cinco, five. Good job. Now we're going to strengthen our back muscles a little bit more. We're going to come into reverse tabletop. So for this, you need to maybe practice a little bit with where to put your hands and feet. Your hands come behind you, fingers pointing away from you, away from your toes. Your hands are shoulder width apart, your feet are hip width apart. And then we're going to bring our hips up horizontally on the inhale. We're going to come into reverse tabletop. This is the back muscles holding you up. You're using some glutes as well. And then bring that back down. Now, we haven't been doing our abdominal work as much as we should have happened. I know I have. So, we're going to come back down onto our mat. Hands come behind our head. And I'm going to extend my right leg, comes out straight, not clear down, not clear up, but wherever you like it. And then my, my right elbow comes across to my left knee. And I'm going to bring that right leg in, extend the left leg, the left elbow comes to my right knee. Just follow your own breath. Inhale as you come down, exhale as you go up. So what this twisting action does, it works not just our rectus abdominis muscle, which is the six pack muscle right down the center of your abdomen. We're also working the oblique muscles and we're working our, particularly on the twist, our transverse abdominis muscle. The transverse abdominis is the muscle responsible. Its primary purpose is to provide a twist.
So keep working this. You can put this video on pause and do this for about 10 or 15 minutes. Or we can do a one more one more sequence and stop. And just relax. Feel the burn in the erectus abdominis, maybe a little bit in your side. Now we're gonna roll over onto our side. And we're gonna do just a little bit of, of the oblique muscle. I'm up on my shoulder, on my elbow. You can come down like this and dorsi flex your toes back toward you. Keep your leg nice and straight. You can feel your oblique muscle right here. Just put your hand on your obliques. And you can feel as you do this, your oblique muscle working. And then hold this leg up and then bring your lower leg up to it. A bit of a balance challenge. Now hold that. Hold that, let that go. Flip around the other side. This time I'll be up on my elbow, leg up. Come up as high as you want to or as high as you can, it's about as high as I can get. You can have this hand down for balance if you like. Dorsi flex those toes back toward your knees. Keep your lower leg engaged too. Engage that thigh muscle. You can feel the oblique muscle working. Hold that up and then bring your lower leg up to it. Now you can really feel that oblique working. And let that go. Cool. Okay, let's see what time we're, we're doing pretty good. I wanna do a balance pose. Let's see if you can see me. Oh yeah, that's Okay, we're just gonna do tree pose. Uh, balance is use it or lose it, as Christiane has taught me. So we're gonna stand Tadasana. And Tadasana, what I like to do is, is my feet, my toes, my, the second toe of your feet, of each foot directly forward, your feet directly underneath your hips. Engage your thigh muscles. Engage your glutes, your butt. That sets your hips in a neutral position. So they're not tipped too far forward, not tipped too far backward. If you engage your thighs, engage your glutes, put your hips right in a neutral position. Thighs, glutes. Now, bring your lower ribs down just until you feel your abdominals engage about 10%. That puts your entire chest cavity in a neutral position. So we're not, we're not doing one of these, and we're not doing one of these. Just bring your lower ribs down until you feel your abdominals engage. It should be fairly easy to feel that after we just did that abdominal work. And then your shoulders up, back, and down. But when we did that, be, uh, be conscious of your ribs. You may have to bring your ribs into alignment again. And then your chin. Your chin parallel with the floor and, and back toward your back for just a little bit. So that's Tadasana. Stand Tadasana. Good. And then we're gonna transfer the weight onto your left foot. Think of a, a root coming out of your left foot. Your right foot comes up and we come into tree. Now as we're in tree, is that left hip with that right hip uh, foot up. Whoa, a little windy in here. I don't want this hip out. I want this hip in the midline. Think tall through the top of your head, like, like there's a string coming out of the top of your head. Somebody's holding that string up and you can't go anywhere with it. Open this leg up. You can bring this foot either up to your thigh or to your calf, but just not on your knee. Open this up. Your arms can be out at, to the side or your arms can be up and overhead. Tree pose. Breathe. It's a good place for your Ujjayi breath. And then come out. Now, just wiggle your tree around. I often find it's easier to balance when I'm moving on one leg 
then if I'm trying to just hold still, bring that down. Shake that out. Plant your right foot now. Come into the Dasana again. Engage that right foot. If you engage, often if you engage your thigh, engage your glute on the standing leg, that's going to improve your balance. This comes up. You can leave your toe on the mat if you like. Or you can bring it up. You can do this against the wall too. You can touch the wall. Pretend there's a wall there, an invisible wall. Ooh, there's one. Now, bring that hip in. Let your arms come up overhead. There you go. I often find it is interesting that I can balance better on my left foot than I can my right. I'm right-handed. So I've been asking a lot, of, a lot of students about this. Do you, depending on what hand you are, are you better on one leg versus the other? And is it the opposite leg that, you're, that your hand is in? And then bring that down. And uh, I've only got a few minutes left today. Our time's just about up. So what we're going to wind up with is we're going to stand at the top of your mat. We're going to come down to the Shavasana. We're not going to forget that. Huh? Stand at the top of your mat. Arms up overhead. Forward fold. Come up halfway, halfway where your back is nice and flat. Halfway, hands down to the mat, step back. I want to do a downward dog because I want to get an inversion in. And bend your knees. The whole idea of downward dog is not to have straight knees. Because if I straighten my knees, then my back rounds. I don't want my my knee, I don't want my back to be rounded. I want my back to be straight, but in order to do that, I've got to bend my knees. Now I'm in an inversion. Now I'm going to come right down to my knees. Now I'm going to come into child's pose. And then I'm going to rotate forward on child's pose. And I'm going to come into uh, rabbit pose. So my thighs are vertical, should be vertical. I got weight on top of my head. My back is rounded. You can even bring this in closer if you like and round, have more rounded back. This is also an inversion. My head's below my heart. But it's also good to have a little bit of weight on your head. Not a lot. I, don't, I do not uh, advocate headstands especially for people who've never done a headstand before or for older folks like myself. I think there's a, a risk of injury with a headstand, but a little bit of weight on your head is good. If you have a headstand practice you've been doing for a while, that's okay, but if you've never done one before, be very, very careful how you go about doing it. But a little bit of weight like this is no problem. Come back, child's pose, and we're going to come back around, and we've got just enough time to wrap up with a minute of Shavasana. So you can lay there on your mat, lower the lights. And just relax. Nothing to do in Shavasana with your muscles. We've already worked those today. And I'm going to go ahead and sign off today. You go, go ahead and continue your, your Shavasana. No need to get up. Rest in that as long as you like. 
But thanks so much for taking a little bit of time today and doing some yoga, moving your body, moving the fascia, and we'll see how this plays out. I had to do two uh, videos for this sequence today, two yoga videos, because my iPhone memory was full, so now I'm on the iPad, and I'll see if I can somehow combine the two into a YouTube video or maybe two YouTube videos, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, until next time. May our thoughts be peaceful. May our words be peaceful. And may our hearts be peaceful. Namaste.